Hello and welcome to another game from Gladiators of the Arena. We are now in the round of 16. And here we have ACCM and Cool versus Stark and Vinchester. This is a best of five series. Game one was random civilizations and then they will switch civilizations in game two. So here we have ACCM as the Huns and VNS Cool playing as the Mayans. In the left side of the map, in the green, we have Stark playing as the Byzantines, and to the top of the map, we have Vinchester in the purple playing as the Persians. So, Huns and Mayans versus Persians and Byzantines. So this should be a pretty good game, and we'll see how the players decide to play it. As we see right now, ACCM, Stone in the back of his map, but gold really far forward. Stone probably isn't going to be as important for him as the Huns. But this gold is in a pretty safe location, but it is close to that wood line. Other stone is forward, and where is his other gold? He should have another gold somewhere. I don't see it. Uh, up, down here, outside of his base. So that's also pretty far forward, but it's towards his teammate, so that should be pretty safe between the two players. Could maybe wall up across here. He does have, unfortunately, his deer are forward. But looks like he does have a boar inside of his base, and where's his other boar? It's not being, nope, his other boar is being stolen right now, as Vinchester is bringing it in. And here's a boar inside, and yep, it looks like Vinchester is off to a pretty good start, getting that boar steal. It's not much you can do when the boar is outside your walls on Arena, it's just really vulnerable to being stolen. And unfortunately only three deers, so he's going to have to try to push those in to make up for that lost boar. And if we take a look at Cool's map, he also has a boar outside, and only three deer that are really far outside. And both of his stones are kind of forward, so not the best position for the Mayan player, but at least this one's pretty safe. As main golds and one of his other golds really safe in the back of his base. And other gold still outside, but at least towards his teammate. But they do have four relics right here in between them, so they should look to pick them up. That's a really nice positioning of the relics for them. And if you look on the other side of the map, we have an unfortunate gold trapped here at this side of the map, although if uh, if Stark wants to take that, he can just chop those trees and take it later in the game. He won't need it till later in the game anyway, since his main gold is really safe, and so is his main stone, so Stark's main resource is really nicely positioned. He's two resources outside, but not too bad. And we're Xing. Looks like Cool is Xing those relics. Main gold for Vinchester forward, uh, but eh, not the worst position. Gold pretty far forward. That stone could wall here and keep that safe. Main stone in the back and gold in the back. So as the Persians, stone probably isn't going to be that important unless we do see some more elephants. And as much as I would love to see them, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And, ooh, very nice trying to get the deer to run into his gate, but the deer is going to run away. His deer also pretty far outside of his walls, and there's the last relic being spotted by Vienna School, trying to get that deer to run inside. So what he's trying to do is get the deer to run... Oop, but no, the scout's going to attack him. If you can get the deer to run into the wall, it'll kind of get stuck halfway through its running animation, and then if you have your scout stand in the gate and open the gate, the deer, the deer will then try to run through the gate, but wasn't able to get that deer in. He did have an extra boar though, so he can't take a scout fight now since he did steal that boar, and he lost HP on the scout. Yep, and... Cool Xing the relics. So Stark and ACCM both up, and who the Huns player looks like he's going to be going for a cavalry archer. His barracks already up and going for the archery range and the blacksmith. Uh, putting the archery range towards the back of his base, maybe he wants to hide it. Might have been better to pull it forward in a better position to help take control of that gold. And our mines player, he's on stone, so he'll be going for a castle and pulling the archers. And blacksmith market for him. Stark, blacksmith market as the Byzantines. Has four villagers on gold, so maybe he'll add more villagers there and go for monks, or he could also just boom, but you don't need that many. There, it looks like he's gonna be going for monks. 
and also a stable for our Persians players. So we'll probably see maybe some scouts, or let's go check what's in that stable. And Winchester stable. Oops, some scouts coming out for Winchester. And as he will be the first one to click up to the castle age, and he's sending villagers forward. And we'll see what are those villagers going to do. He had them. He knows that there's a wolf there, so he built a palisade just to mark where it is. And he built this palisade with the villagers, likely just so that they walk to the same location. And now he's up and building a forward siege workshop. So it looks like he's going to try to pressure the Huns player. And they see that there's this little bit of palisade there without a stone wall behind it. Of course, the Huns can't build houses, so he just walled that up with the palisade. But he didn't opt to make a stone wall behind it. You can, of course, just send a villager to mine five stone and build another piece of wall behind it. But now Manganel coming out. And they have their scouts there to defend, but looks like Winchester got a scout into Red's base and barracks actually for the Mayans player. So we'll see, is he could be going for some eagles? But still, not up to the castle age yet. One up on 31 population, that's so he'll be a bit slow, but Stark doing cartography. Looks like they're going to try to pressure the Huns player, and double monastery for the Byzantines, and they're exiting the location of the castle for the Mayans, so they know the castle is there protecting the stone. And I guess the barracks was to make some spearmen to deal with those scouts. But that mangonel not protected by anything, and that will just get taken out as those will the scout get it in time. And no, it's going to survive just on 5 HP. He'll need a villager to repair it. As Monastery now coming up, but Persian Monks really not good at all, as looks like a Huns player was able to wall behind that, and now he has some Cavalry Archers coming out. And ooh, the Cavalry Archer will try to snipe the Manganel before the Villager can repair it, but the Villager is going to get there in time. And now it's just going to stand within the minimum range of the Manganel, and attack as the Eagle comes over. Even the Villager is going to try to attack the Cavalry Archer, but... Not enough as the Manganel goes down, and now that there's a couple scouts out in the- Ooh, a Spearman also from a Huns player, Manganel killing its own scout. Unfortunate that he won't be able to heal it, and... Monk going to try to run away from the Eagle, but Eagles do a lot of damage to Monks. One more hit and the Monk goes down, but ooh, the scout saves it just in time. But scout will go down to the Spearman, as another Eagle comes out to deal with the Monk. And with, looks like with a few eagles, spearmen, and a couple cav archers, they'll be able to clean up this aggression really easily. And this aggression, not going to be doing any damage. That monk kind of stuck trying to pick up that relic from inside the wall, but he just doesn't know what to do. Finally deleting the wall to get the relic. And well, more monks coming across the map from our Byzantine player, but these monasteries are inside of his base. Those monks have to walk a really long way just to get to the action. And it looks like they did get a convert on the Cavalry Archer, but enough Spearmen there to force them to run away from now. Uh, monks, are they going to try to convert the Spearmen? It looks like they are. Of course, these Byzantine Monks are going to be a lot more effective than their Persian counterparts. But now, double Monks versus Cav Archers and Plumed Archers. I don't know if that's going to work out too well but they will have quite a few monks since both of them are going for monks. And let's just check on uh, on Cool for a second and see. Yeah, he has quite a few, quite a few wound archers coming out of that castle now as he's moving up to engage. Uh, ACCM is losing a few of his calf archers to conversions, but again, not too many as more monks are coming out and he's being forced away from this gold but not that big of a problem because he does have this gold in the back. It is kind of in an awkward location, but he can mine it safely. And this calf archer could get converted. Needs to run away or maybe delete it, but nope, he's going to lose it. And now he's Xing here again, but he has quite a few calf archers and only three monks. One of them is now regaining faith. This eagle can do a lot of damage to the calf archers though. Uh, getting deleted so it doesn't get converted. 
Because these Persian monks, they die in two hits from an eagle. Because eagles get bonus damage against monks, so they do 15 damage each hit. And see, a couple converts on the plumed archers, but looks like this army here is mostly cleaned up as ACCM is Xing again, and Cool's going to send his plumed archers over. Two relics in that monastery, uh, getting taken out by the Manganel, but ACCM is just slowly building up more and more cav archers as. Uh, not going to try to snipe the monk there, but that monk running away, and these cav archers can come in and clean up a few monks. Getting one monk, but losing one cav archer. As more cav archers come in from over here. And now two mangonels. As the plumed archers are moving out here to engage with the converted plumed archers, and these plumed archers from Quill still haven't been able to come over to ACCM and help him. But if we look, ACCM has one, two town centers compared to two town centers, three town centers even for Winchester. All the players still similar on village accounts, but three town centers, oh, four town centers even for Stark, and still only two town centers for Quill. So villager counts are similar right now, but we should see Stark and Vinchester start to pull away, but if we look at the military counts, they're falling really far behind and they're about to lose all of their army here as this Manganel will go down shortly to the cavalry archers and this monk will probably get one conversion, but then will be taken out. There we go. And one more volley and that Manganel's down. And now all of this aggression has been cleaned up with only a very slight uh, villager lead for this team, although they do have extra town centers, and we'll see if our Vietnamese team looks to add in more town centers soon. Still only two town centers for each player, but lots of plumes coming out, and our green player still Stark on four town centers. We know Stark likes to boom, and he's just going to defend against plume Duchess with monks by the looks of it. And Cool going to build a second castle out front, going to help to secure his stone, but nope, deciding to move it somewhere else and move it a few tiles to the side. And didn't take his deer earlier, but doesn't matter too much now. Winchester just now doing Loom, Stark just now doing Wheelbarrow. Maybe a bit late for Wheelbarrow when he already has 70 villagers. But everything here is cleaned up. Castle coming out on the front for ACCM. That will clean up that monastery, and he does have a ram to help clean up that siege workshop. There's ram coming out, deleting a wall to let it out. Villager is standing idle there, but oh, he's going to mine gold. And somehow, somehow the Huns player ended up with a plumed archer when his ally is the one making the plumed archers. Uh, now cavalry archers moving out. Thankfully, this space is walled because it's arena and you start with a wall. And there's even a second layer of walls behind it with uh, an extra house here just to prevent any harassment coming in from that side. Okay. Cavalry archers are now going to fire arrow after arrow at that wall, do a tiny bit of damage, and eventually hope to take it out. But now Cool is advancing to the Imperial Age as the mines on still two town centers and two castles and a siege workshop coming forward so university for ballistics so it looks like he's going to try to pressure our byzantine player here and stark is also advancing to the imperial age but with about 20 more villagers and we also see both the vietnamese players on 67 and stark and vinchester with pretty sizable economy leads and we'll need to see if these players can do something with their economies or uh we need to see if the Vietnamese team can do something with their militaries to try to put some pressure on on these guys and uh, even out this economy lead that they have is now a fourth town center has also been added in for Winchester. And they're just going to start pulling away in villager count. Stables coming up for Winchester doing husbandry, chain barding armor. So let's see if he's making anything yet. Uh, yep, making some knights. So it looks like he will be going for Paladin to help combat the Huns, but now oop, here we are with two petards coming in, taking out that wall, and the plumed archers are now inside of Stark's base, but Stark, he is prepared for this. He already has a house wall behind here, but that wall won't last for long because Quill has a ram, and 
We don't have, it doesn't look like we have a Siege Workshop or any Manganels out for Stark yet. So even though he has protected himself now with houses, the Ram will get through that pretty quickly. And there's nothing he can really do to stop that yet because monks can't convert Rams from the opposite sides of walls. But now Siege Workshop coming up just now for Stark. Two Siege Workshops actually. And he'll probably look to get some Manganels out just to try and stop the rams and what is we'll see what is Quill going to try to do looks like he's going to try to push into that monastery he sees a flag there and he probably just wants to take out that relic so we see over here that siege workshop is being taken out and the ram has let the plumed archer and the cavalry archers from accm into vinchester's base and the knights are now going to come around from behind where are these knights going are they going to defend himself or Looks like he might have been thinking about sending them over to Stark, but no, they're going to come from behind and try to trap the cavalry archers and get a good fight here. So the cavalry archers have to run out through that tiny hole, and they're going to block them and keep them inside and get the engagement. So they do have the plus two armor upgrade. ACCM is still on his way up to imp, so he doesn't have all of his imp upgrades yet. Has now four stables are out for Vinchester, and he's going to clean up these cavalry archers. These knights doing a good job. Locking them in, taking a good engagement, and cleaning up all of the cavalry archers. But on this side, ACCM's coming forward with a castle. He's almost in. He's just about through the monastery. And Stark, he has a huge economy, but only 8 military compared to the 31 of ENS Cool. So Cool could do a lot of damage, and Stark is open here. And we'll see. He does have... That's probably... Yep, and... An Onager coming in, so he has done the Onager upgrade, so he does have units to defend against the Plumed Archers and the Rams, so he should be okay for the moment, but we'll see what Quill is able to do. He's doing chemistry, and he'll probably be able to get some trebuchets out from that forward castle, and we'll see a trap fight. Yep, trebuchet coming up from the rear, and another trebuchet coming from that castle, as Stark is probably also getting out some of his own trebuchets. But he only has one castle. Whereas the Mines player has one, two, three castles to produce traps and already has an advantage with two traps out before, uh, just as Stark's making his first. Meanwhile, the top, Vinchester coming forward with stables, putting a castle on the front. And it looks like he's just going to go even further into cavalry, as Vinchester is up to the Imperial Age and we'll probably see cavalry coming in for him. But now the traps are firing at this castle. Three traps out already for cool. And only one trev out, as the trev will be able to snipe off the onagers even. Cool, uh, even sending villages forward, will be able to repair those trebs. And this trev looks like it's about to go down. AC, uh, cool, focusing the trebuchets instead of the castle. And keeping all of his wounds right here to protect the trebuchets. Not going to let those onagers get close, because that castle will be able to snipe them off. And now Cavalier coming from our Huns player has knights from the Persians are coming in from behind. And where are these knights going? Are they going to try and snipe the trebs? They're just kind of wandering out here in the middle attacking a single plumed archer now. Taking some fire from that castle. But there's a lot of plumes here. I don't know if those knights will be able to do enough damage to the trebs. And Xing some gold over there it looks like. Uh, Stark has completed a hole in his wall, but uh, <laughs> Quill going to force Stark to make some more holes in his wall if, he, if those knights want from Winchester want to get in. But he's cavalier from ACCM in a nice position as the siege rams come forward, but nothing to defend them. And ooh, can they take out these trebs? And oh, ooh, takes out three trebs at once. Nice shot from the siege ram there. I love seeing how the trebuchets get destroyed while they're unpacking, then they stand up just to fall down again. And now these cavalier trying to take a fight, take out the siege rams, take out the trebuchets. Both players keeping their castles alive for now. As this trebuchet still, uh, still staying alive, still keeping this castle up as Stark's doing everything he can to repair. And this team still has a big eco lead, but this is a lot of plumed archers, at almost 50 plumed archers now. And he needs to keep them alive. 
is now Finchester just finished the Cavalier upgrade. And we'll see, is he going to go for the Paladin? Yep, he's going directly for the Paladin upgrade, but ACCM is going to have it first. And Finchester does have a few more Cavalier out right now. We'll check where are these stables. Yep, looks like ACCM is in a position. He's ready. He's got six stables up. He's ready to produce Paladin. His eco is now a bit smaller though, so Winchester might be able to outproduce the Hun player. And of course, with the Persian team bonus, they do have their attack bonus versus archers. But right, start trying to add another town center on these resources up here to keep those villagers safe, and still keeping this castle alive. But that treb just consistently managing to take it out and whittle down its HP. Ooh, but now a Bombard Tower coming out from Stark, trying to gain a bit more control of his map, of this area of the map, so he can bring his siege weapons more forward. And Stark needs to spend a lot of stone repairing that castle, but it is, of course, a Byzantine castle, so it has more HP. This can be quite difficult to take down. But now we have Plumed Archers and Paladin versus Skirmishers and Cavalier. And Stark desperately trying to throw up a few Bombard Towers, and it could be a problem if they get up, but still he's keeping this castle alive, taking advantage of that extra Byzantine HP. As now more Cavalier coming in from behind from Winchester, as he just finished the Paladin upgrade, and now Rams are coming in, and now four Trebuchets here are cool, and see, he's focusing down the Trebuchet from uh, Stark, but Stark deleting some of his walls, letting the Paladin in from the rear, but Cool nicely does have some houses and some walls to funnel those Paladin into a narrow choke point and keep them keep them away from the Trebs so that only a couple can attack at once. So one Treb going down, these Trebs over here look like they'll stay up, there's enough Twin Archers there to kill the Paladin, but now Ram's coming in. Only... Uh, only, only just now doing the cap ram upgrade, just battering ram for now. So this castle staying up as the only treb from Stark has been taken out, and now the paladins are getting into Stark's eco. So all of his town centers have to be garrisoned. We see he's up to about 20 idle villagers. As everyone's just sending all of their units here, and the Vietnamese team are just desperately trying to hold on to this castle because they know if they can keep that castle up, they'll be able to pressure. Stark and take him out of the game because right now Stark only at 14 military and Winchester only at 20 military as well and it looks like the Vietnamese team will be able to hold this forward here as just not enough units from Winchester and Stark. Winchester now doing everything he can to produce Paladin but Stark this castle oh, it's been up for so long but it's just about to go down and there it goes this castle staying up, villagers were there to repair it, and now another forward siege workshop coming in for cool. As this barracks is on fire and looks like it's about to go down. These bombard towers only got up two of them, only one still up, so probably not as much value from that upgrade as he would have liked to have had. But he still has control of this gold, but now he's down, he's lost a lot of villagers down to 80. That huge eco elite he had was gone. Trying desperately to put up another town center in his back just to keep his villagers safe. Trying to mine this gold here. He still has resources, but there's really nothing he can do to spend it on. He's floating about a thousand gold, but doesn't have any food. Lost that relic. And Winchester slowly trying to mess up these paladins, but ACCM also has a good number of paladins as well coming in. And still these rams coming forward, but I don't know if they'll be able to do anything. Stark probably needs to delete more of this wall. But now the paladin are into the eco, they're fighting against the skirmishers and a few monks, so they'll go down pretty quickly. But more paladins from Vinchester coming up at the top, but nice use of houses here from Cool, making some narrow choke points for his plumed archers to stand so that the paladin can't attack them as efficiently. But now Onigrid come forward. This Onigrid needs to get some good shots on the plumes, but the trebuchet is there. Uh, firing at the town center though, but the paladin are able to take out the Onigrid. There's more paladin just coming in from the rear. And... There's the GG from Winchester. They know they're not going to be able to defeat this army here. Just 70 plumed archers from the mines. They're staying alive. And there's the GG. There's stronger eco we saw from Stark. Putting down four town centers. 
go, trying to boom, but just wasn't able to uh, hold out against this early Imperial attack from the Vietnamese team. They were able to hold on to this castle and just control the game from this strong forward position. If we look at the achievements, we see military from Stark. Yeah, it lost a lot of units just trying to defend, whereas ACCM, once he was able to boom, uh, defeated that early pressure, was able to boom behind it, and had strong enough economy that not quite as strong as Winchester's, but still good enough to produce Paladin and keep the the large number of wound archers from Viennese Cool protected. And that, that early attempt to go for the monk aggression didn't really pay off that well for them. Alright, so we'll get into game two next. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next game.